If you've been following our DIY adventures for the last few weeks, then you know that we've been working on transforming our friend's outdated house. We started with the kitchen, and after four weeks of hard work and a lot of sneaky surprises, we revealed a brand new kitchen to our friends. So if you missed last week's video, you'll definitely want to go back and check that out. This week, we're moving into the living room where Andrea will be building a custom built-in shelving unit from scratch, and we'll be throwing in two big surprises that they don't know about. So join us in the adventures of my DIY wife and her non-handy husband. So this week's project is going to be building a custom shelving unit on this wall. They have a ton of books and so we thought it would be really cool to just showcase all of them on this wall but also have a spot for a TV and a little bit of storage as well. Where are you getting the design for this again? <laughs> It's right in here. <laughs> oh, that's what I thought, yes. People want to know how my planning goes, and I'm like, usually as soon as I can figure it out in here, then I'm, <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of planning. <laughs> I started out by using a stud finder and some tape to mark the studs that I wanted to attach my vertical boards and then shelf brackets to later on. Inside. Yeah, inside. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I then used more tape to mark out the general shape of my entire design. I like to tape out my ideas like this just to make sure there's not some weird area or measurement that's not making sense that I'm missing when I write it on paper. I think that's all I need. That looks pretty dang cool. After I finalized all the details and measurements for the shelving unit, it was time to move on to the mantle. We decided to replace this old mantle, one, because our friends honestly just didn't care for it, and two, because this stain color and size isn't really doing much for this brick. I'm going to build a simpler, more modern mantle with a stain color that I feel complements the color of the brick much better. Normally, to pull off a mantle like this, there should just be a couple of screws in the top or the bottom holding it to the support, but unfortunately, whoever built this actually built it onto the support that is attached to the brick, and so the only way to remove it was to actually pull it apart. Once I had the old mantle removed, I was able to get a better idea of how wide I wanted to make the new mantle. And then once I had figured out all of my measurements and materials, we were ready to make a trip to Lowe's to get everything we needed to build this shelving unit and the new mantle. For the shelves, I decided to use pine two by tens and then some pine one by twos for the vertical pieces I'll be using on the wall. The real test. So the issue here is we got 12 foot boards in the van that's only about 11 and a half feet long. Right, perfect fit. We're ready. Once we were back at the house with all of our supplies, I measured out and marked exactly where I wanted those vertical one by twos to go and then wrote down all of the measurements for the shelves so I could go make all of those cuts at once. From here, it was a pretty straightforward process of measuring twice and cutting once to avoid another trip to Lowe's, and really the most difficult part was maneuvering these giant boards. When I work with dimensional lumber like this, I do like to make a fresh cut on one end and then measure after that so I have a nice clean cut on both ends of my finished piece. finished making all of the cuts, I gave everything a quick sanding with 150 grit sandpaper just to remove any sharp edges, splinters, and then these annoying ink stamp marks that they put on these boards. Yeah. 
And this is a good time to pause and say thank you to today's video sponsor, PhilPow. PhilPow offers battery operated, high powered leaf blowers at an affordable price, which you can use to tidy up your lawn, garden, deck, patio, gutters, driveway, or in our case, blow off sawdust from your furniture or driveway while you're working on a project. Phil Powell sent us the B8 Pro Plus and the B8 Pro models. The B8 Pro Plus has two 20 volt batteries, 570 CFM, and is definitely the most powerful electric leaf blower that I have personally used. This leaf blower has three different power settings and a turbo option. The turbo option can even blow several water bottles filled with water. If you've watched any of our furniture videos, you know I use a leaf blower pretty regularly while painting furniture, and this one certainly didn't disappoint. If you're interested in checking out Phil Pow leaf blowers, then click on our links in the description box of this video and use our code for a special discount on their leaf blowers. Next, it was time to stain these shelves. I started out with a quick coat of wood conditioner just to avoid any splotchy areas and give a more even consistent finish. And then I stained it with Minwax stain in the color Early American. While the stain dried, it was time to start working on the mantle. I decided to build a mantle out of pine one by six boards, and before I started building, I brought one of the boards inside just to get a better visual and make sure I was cutting it to the right length. For the mantle, I'm basically building a hollow box that will hopefully look like a wood beam once it's finished. I mitered the two front corner pieces where the front board meets the two side boards and then cut a top and bottom piece out of the same one by six boards. Once I had all of my cuts made, I assembled it all using wood glue and a brad nailer. Hey, you're like a genuine craftswoman, you know what I mean? For real. I then filled all of the nail holes and corners with stainable wood filler. Once the wood filler was dry, I sanded the whole thing down with 150 grit sandpaper. Before staining the mantle, I of course had to bring it inside and just make sure the size looked right. Cool, I mean, it'll look like a piece of reclaimed wood. Good work, darling. <laughs> That looks good. Hey, what do you think about the new mantle? Judging by the wag in your tail, I'd say you're liking it, yeah? Next, it was time to set up to stain the mantle and apply top coat to all of the shelves. Got a turbo button going. <laughs> Go ahead. I again applied a coat of wood conditioner first and then Minwax's stain in the color Early American. For the top coat, I decided to use Minwax's Satin Wipe-On Poly. It's really easy to apply and get a nice even finish, plus I have really loved the durability of this product and with this color of stain, I'm not worried about the slight yellowing that might happen with an oil-based product like this. While the top coat dried, I then cut some 1x2 boards that I would be attaching vertically to the wall. Careful, darling. What are you looking for? I don't know. I then gave these a quick sanding just to knock off any rough corners or edges. I decided to spray paint these black instead of staining them so that they would blend in with the black metal brackets I would be using to support the shelves. Ooh, I almost sprayed myself in the face. 
While the spray paint dried, I switched back to working on the mantle. Next, I cut a two by four that I would secure to the bricks that I could attach the mantle to that. me around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, they have fallen off my head. Okay, so I just wanted to stop and point out that the only reason I'm using these bolts is because they're already here and they're still really sturdy, but you can do this exact same thing and get masonry screws from any hardware store. They're usually the blue ones. They'll, they'll say what they are. And then you simply drill a pilot hole into your wood and then drill a pilot hole with a special drill bit into either the brick or the mortar in between. And then you can attach it that way. So if you don't have the bolts, it's not a big deal. To attach the mantle, I simply drilled pilot holes through the top of it and then used wood screws to secure it to the two by four. Once the mantle was installed, I was ready to attach these one by twos to the wall. I double checked again that I was attaching these right on the studs and then drilled a pilot hole and screwed these to the wall. I'll also go ahead and add that these vertical boards are more for a visual effect and don't actually add any structural support and the screws that I'll be using into the brackets are long enough to go all the way through these boards and into the studs in the wall. I found these heavy duty shelf brackets on Amazon and I'll be sure to link them in the description but I did want to point out that I used the most heavy duty version I could find where each pair holds 200 pounds. We will be adding a ton of books and I wanted to make sure it would hold all of them without any worry of them falling down eventually. Next I simply measured and marked where I wanted each bracket and then started attaching them to the 1x2s. Finally it was time to bring in all of the shelves and this part is so fun because because I'm finally getting to see this idea that's been in my head and then taped on the wall actually take shape in front of me. Whew. What do you think, babe? Yes. Oh, I, just, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Thank you so, oh my God. Can I get your number maybe? Take out. This finished out a really productive day and had me looking forward to the next day when we would get to fill these shelves and bring a couple of surprises with us that our friends didn't know about. Good work today, darling. This was a satisfying work day. Gosh, it looks so good already. Not even done. We started off the next day by loading up a few surprises to take over to our friend's house. Okay, Levi, can you open the door And if you couldn't tell, yes, we have quite a few more surprises to unload at their house next week. So you guys remember how we did that thing where we, we were asking you to donate towards this project? Well, we wanted to get them a frame TV and uh, with these guys we did. Santa sleigh is ready to go. Castlery sent us this sideboard and the funky style on it goes with this space perfectly. Uh, I'm gonna go straight. Yeah, ready? <laughs> I've actually known this piece was coming for a while now and so I built the shelves to fit perfectly around it. Thankfully, this piece came with lots of styrofoam, which made for some really fun experiments. Yo! Go Dad! Yeah! Yes! Perfect! <laughs> <laughs> 
Once we had the sideboard set in place and all of the shelves in their final position, we were able to attach them to the brackets with screws from the underside. Once the shelves were all attached, we were able to start putting books on the shelves and there were a lot of books. Finally, we had one last huge surprise for this bookshelf wall, thanks to all of you. Let's get this bad boy out. <laughs> now that the bookshelf is all set up, we were ready to start installing their new frame TV. Unfortunately, after we got everything opened up and out, we realized our box was missing the wall mounting bracket. Thankfully, I was able to find a new bracket locally at Best Buy, so we were able to come back later and get this installed, and we'll show the actual installation in next week's video. And here is what this whole bookshelf wall looks like finished. What a build on this custom shelving unit. It looks amazing in the space. I love seeing all the books displayed and their frame TV. <laughs> it just looks so stinking good. Yeah, it was a relatively simple, straightforward build, but it had such like huge impact on the space. So it's really satisfying to build something like that, that you can knock out really quickly, but it's just massive. It takes up the whole wall and it totally changed the feel of the space and looks so good. All right, so now let's talk about the cost breakdown because it really didn't cost you that much. Yeah, the main bulk of the cost of this project was those metal brackets and I did get the most heavy duty ones, like I said, that each hold 100 pounds per a bracket. So that might have been overkill, but I did want to make sure the books didn't ever fall down. <laughs> so that was $200 for the brackets alone and then I spent about 150 on all of the wood. So. 350 total, that is not bad for basically an entertainment center bookshelf that takes up your entire wall. <laughs> Especially one that's custom and looks that yeah. good. Well, that's it for this week's video, but we are gonna keep rolling in this living room and next week we're finishing out the space and bringing in tons of surprises. We are absolutely gonna shock them and knock their socks off. So stick with us on the journey and we'll catch you next week. What's going on with that tail? What's going on with that tail? 100 pounds per a bracket, just to make sure. 100 pounds per a bracket, 200 pounds per a pair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>